everybody and welcome back to the channel now i hope you enjoyed that opening sequence of this camera firing the shutter all the cogs and springs working together making this whirring sound and eventually firing the shutter it's just a breath of fresh air uh, in this electronic age where everything's done electronically uh, that you know in the days gone by everything had to be done mechanically so i thought i'd just uh, share that with you now i bought this camera from ebay Oh, a few years ago never used it so I thought it's about time I tested it out so I went round my local town of Otley uh, took some photographs nothing special just to make sure the camera was working okay and uh, the only thing that I did do prior to going out was change the light seals uh, as they'd gone on this camera and I'll show you in this video uh, how I did that now you might be looking at this camera and thinking well that says contacts uh, D on there mine says Pen Pentacon well there's a good reason for that and it's all to do with the name before the war contacts were a, 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 a maker of high quality uh, cameras especially rangefinder cameras and uh, after the uh, second world war germany was split into east and west and zeiss icon veb dresden continued to make uh, these cameras and use this contacts name but contacts in west germany challenged that in a big legal battle that went on for a number of years and eventually won that battle and um, uh, Zeiss Icon and East Germany were no longer allowed to use this name and uh, the, the, the name of the camera changed to Pentacon so that's why if you see a camera if your camera is exactly the same as this uh, but with a different name that's the reason why now it's a beautiful camera I think it's a beautiful camera to look at but it's uh, quite different to what you would expect from uh, a more modern SLR camera uh, such as this one and you'll see the difference in size this is the Canon EF which I've done a video about um, this obviously uh, does use batteries and it has got electronics um, and you can see that the the Contax D is quite a bit smaller it's not as wide um, it's, it's, it's a little bit shorter in that way and it's not as deep so overall it's a lot smaller camera and and with that it's going to weigh uh, quite a bit less but it does what all cameras do uh, it has a shutter and a aperture uh, selection and uh, that's what they're designed to do and it takes pictures no different to any camera that's made today now it's, it's slightly different to this camera in, in some respects um, if I take the lens off the lens is a M42 screw mount, very popular. So you can get plenty of second hand lenses for this camera. If we look at this camera, uh, when it's not wound on, the mirror is up in the in the up position. So it means you can't see uh, through the viewfinder. Uh, you can't see anything, it's blocked off by the mirror. And the only way you can see through the lens is to wind the camera on and the mirror comes down. And that's similar to our Hasselblad or, or Bronica medium format camera work. And it's only until you press the shutter, the mirror goes up and blocks the viewfinder. So th that's where it's a little bit different to modern, uh, modern SLRs that have uh, automatic return in mirrors. Screw lens back on. The other thing with this camera, um, at the top it doesn't have a, a shutter speed dial. It has a, a disc with shutter speeds uh, marked on underneath this glass. And uh, the way you select the shutter speeds is by pressing down this round knob and turning it. And you can select your shutter speeds. But one thing you have to remember is at the back of the camera, if we slide this, the switch to the, to, the, uh, to the left, you'll see that a little arrow there comes up. And if it goes to the right, the arrow comes there and it's in black. The red arrow is for slow shutter speeds and the black arrow is for fast shutter speeds. Now the fast shutter speeds run from 50th to 1000th and the slow ones run from a 1 second up to I think it's a 30th or 25th of a, or a 20th of a second. They're slightly different to modern cameras. So as an example, if I want to... Uh, Set a shutter speed of say one second. I'm on one second. I make sure that the arrow's pointed to one second. Cock the shutter. 
and fire it. And then at the opposite side, uh, it's at 50th of a second. Now to use 50th, all I have to do is slide the switch to the right, the black arrow points to it, and fire the shutter and we're at 50th. And as I say, that's how you select the shutter speeds on the camera. So you can select any shutter speed like a normal camera. It's just a little bit more awkward on this camera to do. But uh, having used it, I found it wasn't uh, that hard to, to use at all. You soon get used to it. As I say, this is the rewind knob. Just wind it. It stops when it comes to the end of the frame, so you can't double expose. It has a frame counter. It's a manual, manual, manual one. It's not an auto counter. But I found this is to be pretty useless on this camera because every time I turn that, I, I turn this. So you've just got to remember, you know, how many frames you've got left uh, to shoot it when you're out with the camera. Uh, it's got a PC socket here and this is your rewind knob. And this is a reminder for you, film ISO. Now, when we look at the front of the camera, um, it's got a self timer. I'll wind it on, show you that working. Pull it down and then you turn that little knob and it fires it sets the self timer running for about 10 seconds and you can see also on the front we've got two eyelets uh, for fitting a strap on the camera and then you shut a button on these instead of being on the top of the camera uh, at the, uh, the, uh, the front of the camera and that's the same with my Pentacon uh, 6 and it were, I think it's a, a really nice place for a shutter button to be placed rather than on the top. And they seem to prefer that way of uh, making them. And I quite like that. And then you've got a cable release socket, uh, well, a cable release thread uh, in, in the button uh, to attach a cable release. Uh, the lens, uh, it isn't an auto stop down uh, or, or uh, open aperture metering. You have to manually stop the lens down. But to help you with that, there's a ring that you push back on the lens and let's say you want to set the, the camera to uh, f8 if you see that little red dot there pull that back set it to f8 and then I uh, wind the camera on uh, compose and focus and then to take to stop the lens down you simply get all of that lever and just turn it and it will stop at f8 it can't go any further so it just makes it that little bit easier when you're stopping the lens down and you can do you can set that on any uh, any of the um, on the apertures on the lens the uh, lens has got a really good depth of field scale um, it's got the uh, f-stops either side of the index mark of the index mark so you can uh, you, you, you can set uh, scale focus or zone focus with that the viewfinder on this camera is really nice. It's a big, big eyepiece and it's great for spectacle wearers because you don't really have to get your eye right or the glass touching this area as you can see the uh, viewfinder with your, uh, with your, with your glasses on and, and slightly away from it. So that's a good feature. The screen in this, uh, this is the screen, this is what it looks like. It has no markings for shutter or apertures. It doesn't have a, a central micro prism uh, spot uh, or a, a split image. It's just completely plain. It's what's called as a, a Stevens screen. Now I've never heard of that. Uh, if anybody out there knows what Stevens screen is, uh, I'd like to know. But this apparently this this camera has that. Um, so that's really uh, the bottom of the camera. We've got uh, obviously a tripod socket. And then this is a button for rewinding the film. Once you get to the end of the roll, you press the rewind button. You have to keep that press. It doesn't lock. And then turn the re rewind uh, knob until the film's uh, fully rewound. So it's pretty conventional apart from having to stop the lens down manually. And the, the, the shutter speed selection is different to most cameras as it doesn't have a, a, an actual knob to select the shutter speeds. Now to load the camera... It's quite easy. Take the back off or open the back, not take it off. Um, you get your film. I always seem to struggle doing this on video, but put the film in at uh, left hand side, pull it across, find the shutter first, and then we put the leader of the film 
into the slot push it into the slot make sure it's over the sprocket holes that's what actually pulls the film on and then wind the film on it's quite easy to load fire the shutter close the back and then just keep on winding a couple of times And then you wind on to your first exposure. You can if you want try and use this. Mine might be faulty. Uh, this stage you'd set the frame counter to zero. Um, light seals. I'll just rewind the film. This is how you do it. You press the rewind button there. I've shown you before. Just keep winding the film. I just heard it come off the, the wind on spoke. I'm going to take the film out. Uh, the light seals on this camera that I replaced was one small one at the bottom there where the door shuts and then a light seal where the hinge is there and then on this camera I look carefully at where the uh, the areas where the door sits in that's at the, along the top there and at the, at the bottom I couldn't see any evidence of, uh, of uh, any light sealing there but uh, I just put some light seals in while we're at it just to make sure but I'm not entirely sure that you have to do again if anybody knows uh, whether you have to do that on these cameras just let us know because it's a real pain to get it in this bottom one it's quite narrow but anyway the good news is no uh, lighting so all in all uh, a really really nice camera once you get used to it easy to use it does feel a quality camera it's light to carry uh, it's a small package as I said compared it with the uh, Canon EF but looking in my hand it's a, it's a small package so a very nice camera that I enjoyed going out and using it the pictures I'm going to show you I developed them in uh, this stuff Pyro 510 this was given to me by Roger shoot film like a boss uh, thank you Roger I've uh, eventually I've, I've developed this uh, film in the uh, in the pyro and they look quite good uh, so I'll try it again and just uh, you know do a little bit co comparison to the pyrocat HD that I use but uh, uh, first impressions looks very good uh, it's easier to use because you've only got one uh, one mix to do you haven't got a part A and a part B so again thank you and uh, see how we go with that so on to the pictures the film as I say I used was the Ilford FP4 I rated it uh, ISO 125 and uh, no filters were used and I used a handheld light meter to take the light readings and uh, these are the pictures that I took with the contacts uh, D.
Right, I hope you enjoyed the pictures I took with this beautiful uh, little SLR camera, the Contax D, and I really enjoyed using this camera. It just feels right in the hand, it's not too heavy, it's not too light, it just feels right, it's, it's a really solid camera. Uh, another thing I like about this camera is the large eyepiece at the back, it's, it is really big is that, and uh, it's great for a spectacle wearer because if you uh, look with your eyes, slight, your glasses slightly away from the viewfinder, you can see the whole screen uh, and that's a big bonus because it stops you from uh, sometimes when you have to press against these older cameras they usually metal surrounds uh, scratching your glasses so you know it's a, I found that really really nice to use uh, I managed to fix the um, the frame counter on this camera as you remember it was just moving about wherever it wanted to do uh, I took off the uh, wind on knob one single screw in the centre lifted that off Lifted the plate with the frayed numbers off, a uh, few little washers, took them out, cleaned it all up, re-lubricated it, put it all back together and I can say now it's all working perfectly. If you listen, you can hear the notches. And the other thing is when I wind the camera on, even if I catch the plate with the, the uh, frayed numbers on, it doesn't move it, it's locked in position. So I get accurate uh, frame counting now, so I'm really pleased about that. Another thing that I found with this camera is if I wind it on and if you listen, as I slowly press the shutter button the mirror has locked up but the shutter hasn't fired and then to fire the shutter I press it all the way down. Now that's uh, brilliant uh, if you're um, using uh, long exposures uh, and you can lock the mirror up as it just cuts down on the vibration. I didn't realise this camera had that uh, function but uh, it does on this one anyway. Uh, so that, that's something else to add to its specifications. Now as regards the Stevens screen, I asked that question, I'd never uh, heard of that. And as I say, I asked that question earlier on in the video. But since then, I've done some research and I found out what Stevens screen is. A Stevens screen is a type of focusing screen where the matte surface is the flat side of a pl plano or plano convex condenser which increases apparent screen brightness uh, so that's what a steam screen is I mean I don't know what all that means but all I know it's a very very nice uh, uh, viewfinder to look through there's no f-stops no shutter speeds uh, to see in, in the viewfinder there's no central uh, circle with a, with a split image or a microprism uh, center it's just plain and it makes it really really nice uh, for focusing and, and, and composing without anything else uh, distracting you. The lens on this camera as I say is a, a, a 50mm f2.8 Tizar lens or Tessa lens and it produces some really really nice pictures and at wide open uh, it's a beautiful lens uh, the out of focus that, that it produces uh, closer into subjects um, is really really nice as you've seen in the pictures. So all in all uh, a really really nice camera that I would uh, highly recommend. Now in the video uh, I, I used the FP4 in this camera to take the pictures and I, and I developed the uh, the negatives in uh, Pyro 510 that was uh, kind, kindly donated uh, to me by uh, uh, James Lane of the Zone Imaging Lab. I'll leave a, a link to his uh, website in the description and uh, so far I'm very very pleased with the Pyro 510 it's produced some really uh, nice negatives I'll keep uh, trying it and uh, keep you updated how I go with that but uh, so far uh, the results have really impressed me right so that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it um, and learnt something about another uh, classic uh, camera from the past and uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding this camera or films or, or developers or whatever anything film orientated just leave a message uh, below in the description I'll get back to you if you like the video please give me a like uh, better still uh, subscribe to my channel and as I say always stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video